suck. I'm reliably informed that I'm terrible at pimping my stuff. So here I am, pimping my stuff. You can buy most of that shit that I make over at post-mort.com. Hope to see you there. Lamentations of the Flame Princess is an old school revival RPG. It's basically the old, 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 old rules of D&D with some house rulings that James Raggi has made presented in a book that really plays up the aesthetics more than anything else of James Raggi's campaigns. Individualized monsters playing up on the weird and the Cthulhu-esque and the whole almost rifts-like combination of weird and strange things. It's the presentation that makes Lamentations what it is, the quality of the books, the quality of the writing, and that it really presents a really strong sort of horror, heavy metal, deadly aesthetic to the game. That, that's its selling point. It's something it does really well. There's a few other things like some innovations around character creation, skills, and so on. But by and large, the main thing you buy a Lamentations product for is gonzo weirdness, horror, and that heavy metal aesthetic that's almost completely gone by the by in terms of proper D&D, I suppose. The old school really blossomed thanks to the system reference document and the open gaming license, which made what hobbyists were doing anyway more clearly legal and okay to do, and led to a huge profusion of these kind of old school games and riffs on the old rules, and that in turn exerted an enormous influence on 5th ed D&D, which, at least in terms of rules, has gone back to its roots in a lot of ways, albeit with a couple of story elements. It's, uh, it's setting, I think, and community where Wizards is really failing at the moment. But Lamentations of the Flame Princess is one of the more prominent and attention-grabbing old-school games, and unfortunately, Lamentations of the Flame Princess and James Raggi, who heads up the company, they're in dire financial straits. For a number of reasons. I mean, there's the obvious stuff, like COVID. There's the slightly less obvious but understandable stuff, such as the Finnish post office having upped its rates for international shipping. But, you know, there are alternatives that might be more cost-effective. Uh, things like Hermes and so on. Uh, they're not necessarily great, but they are good alternatives to some post offices and tend to be a lot cheaper. So yeah, there's there's ways around that. Because it, COVID also means a lot of people have lost their jobs, so they have less money to throw around. You've got to factor that in. The fact that James took an enormous amount of loans on the understanding that one year would follow from the next in terms of profit that's probably unwise. I'm perhaps overly cautious. I don't put myself at that kind of level of financial risk. If it's £2,000 or £5,000, yeah, I'm in full panic mode, so I don't do that. Raji is about $100,000, I believe, in debt. I mean, part of me just wants to think, like, how? Why? Why would you let yourself do that? Uh, it, do it doesn't make a great deal of sense to me. So that was the big bad move, I think, in uh, living beyond your means, take taking loans, and so on. You would hope that there would be some relief on these loans, and so on, given the situation, given COVID, given that people want to get their money back, and if it takes a bit longer, so be it, you would think. But uh, apparently... They're under threat of closure. James has done things that haven't helped. And this kind of ties into cancel culture a little bit, which people insist doesn't exist. But here we have a company going under, an important and very creative and very artistic company going under, in part because of cancel culture. But what do I mean? Well, the Raji's been on the back foot quite a lot. He produced several books with Zack Smith. Zack Smith did D&D with Porn Stars. Uh, he was overall very good for the D&D brand and for role-playing in general, up to a point. 
And then his ex accused him of various sexual improprieties and uh, bad behaviours. And Raji was intimately and financially tied to Zack. So with Zack being cancelled and deleted and hated upon and various outlets moving to ban anything that he'd worked on, Raji took an enormous hit. An enormous hit. Because a lot of what was going on with Lamentations was tied to Zack and his products and things that he'd worked on and some of their back catalogue was as well. So you had a kind of boycott going on, you had a bad reputation going on, you had books being banned from sale on certain sites. That certainly hasn't helped at all. And of course, Zack hasn't been actually found guilty of anything yet. There has been no court case. People are just kind of going with it. Now, he may or may not be guilty. I don't know. I've gone back and forth on what I think about that. But you have to hold people innocent until they're proven guilty. Except people don't, do they? And is it fair that Raji should be punished for the behaviour, alleged behaviour, of someone he worked with? That doesn't seem right to me. That doesn't sit well with me. It, it just doesn't make sense. It's not just, it's not right. It's not just all right that Zack should be completely excommunicated for an unproven accusation, but it's certainly not right that Raji should have his company driven into the ground, at least in part because of his association with Zack. Raji also put out a photo of him with Jordan Peterson. And that caused a huge fuss and caused people to quit and step aside from projects. Peterson, whatever you think of him, is part of the public conversation. And he's really a self-help guru, <laughs> more than anything else. Uh, people fixate upon him through what I think is a misunderstanding of his beliefs around trans issues. I don't like the guy. Uh, I think he's a bit uh, a bit dangerous, even, but not dangerous enough to censor. And if you just appear next to someone that you respect, why is that enough to get boycotted or cancelled or to have people pull out of projects with you? Yeah, people can differ and still work together. People can differ and still be friends. There are people I have diametrically opposed views to, but that we can set aside and still be friends. It's a it's a peculiar and again an unjust and unfair thing. He even hired people that weren't uh, necessarily the best fit for the company in an attempt, I think, to try and counteract some of this bad publicity and bad reputation so on that was going on that doesn't seem to have worked out too well either it just seemed to invite more scrutiny and then there's the more basic mistakes there are books that are extremely late crowdfunders that haven't been fulfilled and while those are lagging behind and behind and behind there are other projects which have moved forward been funded been released <sighs> So the practical upshot of all this is that if we don't help out James Raji, if we don't buy some more of his books and materials, either PDF or print, or whatever, then they're going to go under. I think that would be a loss. I think that would be a shame. I think Raji has made mistakes, I think he's overextended, I think the loans were a terrible idea, but a lot of this is unjust, unfair or unpredictable in the case of Covid and the knock-on effects of that. So if you have the inclination and you have the spare money, I strongly suggest that you go and buy something from Raji and maybe get him 
out of this hole in the hopes that he'll learn his lesson, be a bit more cautious in future. But in this industry, particularly indie publishers, we have to have each other's backs. That's, that's the only way forward. Zhang. In his house in Merlier, great Cthulhu lies dreaming. And when he awakens, he shall have the morning wood of Aeons. Call of Cthentacle is a deeply pornographic card game. Enjoy your tentacles.